All right. Welcome back. Back again for our daily uh, review of this nuttery, this uh, insane madness that never ends. Um, you know, I talked about long ago, I did live streams once a week. Looking back at that, I don't know how I did that. Like, I have no idea how I pulled that off. Because an hour a day, which is probably what I average, maybe a little over an hour a day, that's nowhere near enough. Even if it's seven days a week, nowhere near enough to properly cover this nuttery. But... There was a uh, video that surfaced that I want to talk about on this uh, live stream. And I want the behaviors to tune in because on every video I'm going to uh, delegitimize. I'm going to ridicule dog behaviorists, dog trainers and veterinarians and any other dog expert or professional who puts out this false information that the majority of dog attacks on children are provoked. You are some of the most evil people on this planet. I don't understand how you even sleep at night knowing that you have lies floating around in the public, lies on children. Now it's bad to lie on anyone, but dude, you don't feel any type of way of lying on the whole population of children. What type of sickness is that? I would hate to be born into a world where the adults are lying on me. And that really results in me possibly being mutilated. Y'all up here blaming kids for these attacks when all along these dogs are attacking them unprovoked each and every time. You can't tell us nothing. We're the students here. Big shout out to people who join me on these daily uh, videos. It feels real good to have people alongside me to witness this. Witness this madness we're going over. Now here's the video. Um, I'm getting this from 7 News Miami. Now I think I reported on this a little while ago, shout out to everybody able to join me. Always good to chop it up with everybody. Um, this uh, article surfaced actually yesterday, but I believe I remember reporting on this. A 10-year-old boy who was attacked in Miami. Now, as always, where are you behaviorists? All of you who say that most of these dog attacks are provoked, and you will not find not one provoked dog attack anywhere on my channel. Just one station now with video of a horrifying dog attack showing the moments of tenure. Okay, now I can't show it. But look at the dog. You tell me. And keep your eyes on the kids. You tell me if they did anything. Just one station. What did they do? Now, you saw this dog about to attack this child right here. But then the mutt saw three more kids and focused on them. What is it attacking for? Look at that. Okay, it hasn't started to attack yet, and I can't show the actual attack. Okay, but the dog just jumps up and latches onto the boy and begins to shake. Exactly like a bully breed would do. Now, I believe this dog is an Akita or whatever. It's a massive, giant dog. And this idiot walking this dog, you can tell this is a straight-up brain-dead nutter. Here, let's, let's go so we can get a, a better view of this. And I have a message for this mother. I hope she hears this video. Because I didn't like some of the things she said in here. Wasn't even a split second, and the dog took my child. And Wait a minute, can't show it. Can't show it. I have to be careful, people. 
and the dog took my Okay, now you can't see a bite, you can't see anything. All you see is the boy and the dog back here, but this is the moment where the dog latched onto the boy. What I need y'all to focus on is the moment right before the attack. What did he do to provoke this dog? Behaviorists, what did he do? The dog went after them. They did nothing, nothing. Yet again, yet again, you have an attack, a brutal attack. He sustained serious injuries and we don't see any provocation. So are you behaviorists, you so-called professionals? I just want y'all to know you're not professionals and I'm gonna dedicate each and every live stream. I'm gonna make sure to point out how incompetent you are. Okay, because you, you refuse to respond to uh, my call outs when I make individual call outs. So I'm going to just call you out in every single video. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. A video, more like 10,000. Now check this out. Wait a minute. It wasn't even a split second. And the dog took my child and just was like shaking him. Okay, so now y'all can't see the attack. You can't see the attack. Here, let me share a link here. But as, as you can see, once he started, uh, once he was under attack, the other kids got scared and backed up. And the dog took my child and just was like shaking him. You see? Now you see he dropped that bottle after the, the uh, dog latched onto him and started to shake. And the dog took my child and just was like shaking. You see that? It latched onto him, started to shake, and the boy fell, knocked him off of his feet. And you see the other kids got scared and backed up. Just was like, Shaking him. This disturbing and heart stopping video was captured March 14th. It shows the moment. But after the dog had already attacked the child, this uh, big doofus of an owner tackled the dog, jumped on the dog. And that is what stopped the dog. He barely was able to stop it. Look at this. Look at how he had to pin it down like that. Now understand, the dog was on a leash. The dog was with its owner, but he still could not stop that attack. And this is why I say adult supervision is worthless. It does not keep children safe. It doesn't. I said time and time again, even if there's an adult present, there, the attack will go down. Now look at the moment right before the attack. Why didn't this man see the attack coming? If supervision is sufficient, then why did it fail? Simple question. Why does it always fail? It always fails. And, and you notice how this nutter insisted on walking close to these kids. He clearly saw his dog wanted to attack them call it let's call it what it is i don't want to hear nothing from you nutters i can hear these nutters now he was just curious now had this uh dog not attacked him well i can't even give that hypothetical but all the way up until the dog actually attacked the child nutters would have said that it wants to play when you all know it's the truth. They would have said, oh, it's just excited. It wants to play. So this imbecile of an owner saw that the dog wanted to attack someone and he refused to give them space. He insisted on walking his dog 
directly past them. You can tell. Look at that. He did that on purpose. Just being a flipping nutter. Just like this is what these dumb nutters do. They always want to expose people to their dog. They always want their dog to violate people. This sick doofus nutter did that on purpose. And the dog attacked him. So infuriating. The boy is wrestled to the ground. The uh, dingbat low IQ owner nutter goofball jumps on top of this good for nothing worthless mutant but listen to the mother it wasn't even a split second and the dog took my child and just was like shaking him this disturbing and heart-stopping video was captured march 14th it shows the moment a dog on a leash attacked 10 year old nehemiah comer as he and his siblings were heading home from school near Northwest 105th Street and 2nd Avenue in Miami Shores. He says his wounds are still painful. Starting to hurt a little right now. We first showed you the story. Start, starting to hurt. He could have had his arm amputated. With as disgusting and toxic as these dog saliva is, this is very dangerous. On Sunday and on Wednesday, we got this video of what went down. Look, this thing is just itching to attack somebody. No other animal behaves like this, people. No other animal behaves, not even other predators. Predators don't behave like this. Just dying to attack somebody. For absolutely no reason. And his sister... And that's when he says... Now, listen to what they're saying. They're trying to paint this as a moment where the boy saved his sister. That he jumped in between the dog and his sister. No, he didn't. He was just walking next to her. Video of what went down. Nehemiah says, as the dog got close, it lunged at his sister. And, and notice... The little girl was pointing at that worthless mutt as she was passing it. Y'all, let me go full screen here. She was pointing at it. What do you think she was saying? Look, a doggy. Oh, look, a doggy. Because, and it looked like she was reaching out her hand to possibly pet it. So you can tell she was at least partially brainwashed by this nuttery and this is what these nutters encourage they encourage little kids like this walking up to dogs going up to them and trying to pet them young people this is what can happen to you stay away from dogs wow it was so unprovoked that that is infuriating now, I can't show that, but I want y'all to hear this. It's when he says he jumped in the way to protect her. Now, what? Wait. The story on Sunday and on Wednesday, we got this video of what went down. Nehemiah says as the dog got close, it lunged at his sister. And that's when he says he jumped in the way to protect her. It could have went for his neck. That's how far the dog jumped up. And instead, because my son moved a certain way and had to get his sister out of the way, that's how the dog was able to get an arm, the arm. He was rushed to the hospital by a good Samaritan with bite marks to his shoulder, arm, and hand, and has since been released. But what he didn't know... For me, you're an absolute hero. Mike Bellin was watching 7 News when the story first aired and was... Called him a hero. They want to turn this into a story about a child, another child hero, who jumped in between his sister to protect her from a dog. How convenient. But notice it's a reach. It did not look like he jumped in between 
the dog and his sister to me. It just looked like he was walking and the dog attacked him. It's exactly what happened. Bell and was watching 7 News when the story first aired and was touched by Nehemiah's heroic decision to shield his sister. You like it? And surprised him at his home with a new iPad. It takes a See? special person to do that. See? This is their way of taking your attention away from their own irresponsibility. They want to distract you. This is a, a distraction method or tactic. They, they don't want you to have a discussion or pay attention to the several steps that they've taken to create uh, this attack. They created the conditions for this attack. Making these things legal, uh, exalting them, elevating them to this uh, godlike status, being obsessed Tolerating their presence in society, period. That is what got him attacked. And instead of having a discussion or questioning the presence of these things, does it not make sense to you to get rid of a deadly creature that attacks children most often? will launch an unprovoked attack like this? You want to talk about him being a hero. He wouldn't have to be a hero if you did not create danger. You see, they want you to focus on, oh, a child hero saved his sister. Saved his sister from what? Saved his sister from a threat that you created, that nutters created no that's not gonna work over here we're we gonna pay attention to what need to be paid attention to and that is you nutters bringing these things into society and all these attacks are unprovoked and you behaviorists man shame you're you all going to hell you're gonna burn in hell i hate to be the bearer of bad news but you're not going to enjoy an afterlife. When you live your life as uh, wicked and evil and filthy as this is, no. Do, do not pass go. So this ticked me off, man. I want to flip this into a, a hero story, another hero story. What happened? This was a so-called responsible dog owner, right? He had the dog on the leash, right? And it looked like a fairly short leash. Huh? Didn't I tell you that don't keep nobody safe? A mutt being on a leash next to its owner, that don't keep nobody safe. The only thing to keep them safe is for them not to be in society and they have no place. Nothing that behaves like that and is willing to do that deserves to be in society they don't deserve to walk this earth they should all be euthanized each and every one of them and you all know it and i don't care what you say you you especially know that these large vicious dogs really have no place in society where we grow up we are lucky to have not been mutilated when we were children it's home with a new ipad it takes a special person to do that not a lot of kids. Why, why don't y'all just stop endangering them and they won't have to jump in and save their sibling? How about that? Why don't you stop creating this hazardous environment? How about that? Then you won't have to talk like this. Lunatics. It's a special person to do that. Not a lot of kids would have jumped in front of a dog to try and protect the system. And the thing is, people, they're lying. That's not what happened in this video. He did not jump in between his sister and that dog. Notice, that people, that tells you how desperate they are for a narrative to distract you. He did not jump in between that dog and his sister. They were simply walking by. Y'all clearly see that, don't you? Walking by. They're just walking next to each other, side by side. And as the dog 
looked like it lunged or tried to uh, lunge at the little girl. But she had sort of passed them already. And the boy was closer to the dog. And they're saying that he jumped in between the dog and his sister. No, he didn't. Right now, the little boy is just trying to show that he's not afraid of the dog. In fact, the boy did exactly what these behaviorists and so-called professionals tell you to do. Be still. Don't run. He stood there. He wasn't running. And he was still attacked. You see, kids? You standing still, being a tree, being a rock, that's not going to keep you safe. And you disgusting, filthy nutters. You need to be ashamed of yourself for lying like this. Telling them that this will keep them safe. Oh, just stand still and don't run. You liar. And as always, unprovoked. Oh, yes. People, this is why I'm taking so long with my book. Because books are either a hit or miss. I'm not going to miss. I'm not going to miss. This nuttery needs to go. It's got to go, man. So they tried to flip this into a story about a heroic 10 year old. Fine. Now, let's follow that up with a discussion of why on earth was that thing even there when it had no business there, had no business in our communities, period. They should not even be in city limits, especially not given to people as pets. No pet that does this, and they do this on a regular basis, should be considered a pet. This is nothing but a hazard. Heroic decision to shield his sister. You like it? And surprised him at his home with a new iPad. It takes a special person to do that. Not a lot of kids would have jumped in front of a dog to try and protect his sister. And they keep showing the attack over and over again, man. It's like they getting off on it. On the video, Nehemiah's mom says she doesn't blame the dog's owner. She just wishes he would have done more after. What? What'd she say? You know, actually, it's good that they're showing that attack over and over. Right? Let me retract that. No, that's a good thing. It's what I've always said. People need to see. This is actually not graphic enough. It's just a shame I can't show it. Okay. So she blame the dog. Now, but you heard what the mother said. Right? Coming back to my earlier point. That I don't like what his mother said. Y'all heard that right. As for what's seen on the video, Nehemiah's mom says she doesn't blame the dog's owner. She just wishes he would have done more after the attack. She's not giving me that opportunity to understand his side. Instead, he's allowing me to wait and it fest. Ma'am, there ain't nothing to understand. Understand his side. What he gonna tell you? He shouldn't have been in possession of this thing. There's nothing for him to tell you. And what you mean you don't blame him? I blame him. He was the owner of this thing. He's the one that is supposed to, according to the law, always have his dog under control. So, yeah, I blame him. I don't know. You can blame whoever you want. He is the fault and so is the dog. 100%. Of the blame goes on him and that filthy mutt. Stop talking stupid, people. If you want to say something to this dumb, don't say nothing at all. Let somebody else speak for you. You don't have no near miss where your child was badly injured and could have been killed. You don't take that lightly. And you don't. What 
more does it take for you to blame the owner? He in possession of this thing just almost killed your child. You don't blame him. Okay, what, what more needs to be done? So if that dog would have killed him, you still wouldn't have blamed the owner? No, we have to stop talking stupid, man. People are, you can tell people in general are just afraid of dog lovers. You notice how they've created this atmosphere where people feel like it's a sin to speak against dogs and dog owners. That's why our message resonates with so many people. This has been in the back of everybody's mind. And they come here, they see what we're talking about. And it helps them. It's a moment of enlightenment. And you see things so much clearer after you become educated on this nuttery. New iPad. It takes a special person to do that. Not a lot of kids would have jumped in front of a dog to try and protect the system. As for what see on the video, Nehemiah's mom says she doesn't blame the dog's owner. She just wishes he would have done more after the attack. She's not giving me that opportunity to understand his side. Instead, he's allowing me to wait and it fester it. Me to, for me to be angry, and I don't want to be angry. I want to be angry. I'll be angry for you. I am angry for you. And this is why I'm angry all the time i'm angry for people who should be angry outraged in place of people who should be everybody should be outraged so basically what you saw was a 10 year old being stabbed randomly unprovoked now let me do something like that Huh? What, what you think gonna happen to me? Now, this thing launched this unprovoked attack because it's a dog, and that's what dogs do. So I don't don't give me no lecture. Don't try to tell me that each dog is different. I don't want to hear that. They have a shared behavior pattern and honestly you're not educated to tell us you're not educated enough to tell us nothing so this uh story infuriated me and i don't know why because i've seen so many like it i do know why it infuriated me because it's yet another video. Video. That's the strongest bit of evidence you could possibly have. It's more detailed than photos. Yet another video of an unprovoked attack. And this is what's so disrespectful. This is a horrific scene. This is traumatizing. For all of the people watching, this is traumatizing. And there are some people who wonder why? Why? Why do they do that? It, don't you think it's important to understand why a deadly creature launches unprovoked attacks on kids? Don't you think that's a good question? That's a very important question. Why do these things attack children? And each and every one of these dog so-called experts, each and every one of them, veterinarians, behaviorists, trainers, you ask them, why do dogs do this? They're going to tell you that it's the kids that the kids were doing something to it. They provoked it somehow. And this is all you're gonna hear.
They're not going to tell you anything else. That is what is infuriating. A bunch of liars, and it's a sick lie. I don't have too much of a problem with a random lie. But a lie like this is criminal. And everybody should be outraged. If you're not outraged, something is seriously wrong with you. Most likely you're a nutter. I think I shared this in the uh, chat room. I'm about to share it again. People, the world is crazy. There was a, uh, another story that surfaced here a few days ago. Now, this surfaced yesterday, the uh, video footage, but the attack took place um, a few days ago, about a week ago, a little over a week ago. Yet another unprovoked attack. I mean, literally, this child, let me see if I can s slow this down. No, I can't. Dog on it. Walking by one last time for all you behaviorists, for all you experts, for all you veterinarians who try to act like you know what you're talking about. Scared to tell the truth. You got no heart, no courage, no honor in what you do. This is 110% unprovoked, unprovoked. And you clearly see it. Clear as day, unprovoked. Don't tell me kids are provoking these things when I've literally seen hundreds of attack videos and I've never seen a child provoke a dog before an attack because they never do. They never do. Wow. But anyways... Oh, that felt good. That felt good. There was a uh, a police horse that was attacked by a bully breed. Officers seized the bully breed that attacked a veteran police horse in a park. And the owner said, that the dog acted in self-defense. Now, just picture that in your mind. A horse attacking a pit bull and the pit bull acting in self-defense. How many of y'all believe that? Just lie after lie after lie. Now there's a video. There's a video of it. So you can look for yourself. Yeah. Let's reflect on the dishonesty of at least this nutter. Now I don't know if you can see it. The dog's right here. The horse is here. You can't, you can't really see anything. But we've seen these types of attacks before. Where the pit bull repeatedly leaps up and tries to latch on to the horse. It's basically following the horse. In no way is this an attack on the dog. The horse is trying to defend itself from the dog. Trying to get away from it. Is that just nonstop? And look, how many adults do you have here? One, two, three, four, five people on the ground. And you got two men on the horse. They still can't stop it. There's your supervision. Huh? There's your guardian. Crazy how no matter how many times a horse kicks a dog, excuse me, a bully breed, it comes right back for more. 
They're programmed to not stop fighting. That's part of their instinct. And the same can be said about several other dog breeds. And that's really the case for all large dogs, regardless of breed. All dogs will clamp down, hold, and shake. Bully breeds are more persistent. They just don't stop. And quite often, it's nearly impossible to open their jaws. You can lift them up off their feet. And they'll simply have a tighter grip. So this liar, this uh, excuse me, this liar said this horse attacked his bully breed. Why doesn't that surprise me? Of course, he said that. He's not smart enough to not say that. That's a horrible lie. You want us to believe a horse attacked a, a pit bull? <laughs> wow. Now. The owner said the dog uh, only reacted as she was intimidated after encountering a horse for the first time. <laughs> well, that's a problem. Isn't, isn't that a major problem? If a deadly creature sees some other creature for the first time... Their instinct is to attack? Yeah. If your mutt goes around and is intimidated by any and everything, that's a dangerous creature. And we don't know what might intimidate it. This is just according to their narrative. Almost instinct. How this nutter lied didn't think twice about it and a ridiculous lie he said the horse became skittish when the dog approached it out of curiosity the dog owner said that his bully breed approached this horse out of curiosity and then the dog had, what? Y'all see this? And then, dog had then been defending itself, believing it was coming under attack. I don't know why they worded it like that. And then dog had then been defending itself, believing it was coming under attack. Yeah, by a horse. What, did the horse bare its teeth? You know how dogs do that as a way of threatening you? Did the horse do that? Bared its flat teeth? Oh, the dog thought it was under attack. Well, that's, that's very dangerous. If a deadly creature walking around believing that it's under attack when it's not, what could that horse have done? Other than just exist. What do horses do? That it interpreted as a threat. Nothing. You just got a deranged, uh, abnormal creature. That's it. That's the behavior of a mutant. Is it not? That's what mutants do. They go around and they get intimidated at any and everybody. If you're a living entity they're going to get aggressive and i'm not going to say this mutt was intimidated no when intimidated and it really don't matter if it was intimidated or if it was just bloodthirsty the behavior is all that matters attack this horse the same way that other dog attacked that child for absolutely no reason 
Now, I don't know where this story, I, I think I reported on this. I'm not sure. But a man was left unconscious after a dog attack in Tulsa. A 63-year-old man, unconscious. Now, I'm surprised he wasn't dead. So he bled out enough to pass out, but he wasn't dead. Yeah, I'm not, I don't remember talking about Patrols this. investigating after they say two pit bulls attacked a 63 year old man. Tulsa police say it happened yesterday in East Tulsa. A viewer sent us this video of the scene near 177th East Avenue in Admiral. TPD says the man was unconscious. EMSA transported him to the hospital. We'll bring you any updates on air and on the free Fox 23 news app. Oh, okay. But yet, but yet, let's see who has a, a new therapy dog. Central Oregon. Oh, Northside Intermediate School adds therapy dog to staff really really when did that surface 18 hours ago that story surfaced okay intermediate school okay this is a child okay so you see the age range of the students and this dog doesn't look far from bully breed. It's a large dog. And you want to teach little toddlers, young children, prepubescent children. You want to teach them to try to pet these things. Brainwash them into looking at these things as harmless. And then if they try to avoid them, if they don't want to be around them, you want to tell them they have a mental disorder. No, you have the mental disorder. You and only you. Well, and your dogs. It didn't take long, did it? They have no business doing stuff like this. This is an elementary school. No business. This should be illegal. Look at how dogs operate in society. Look at how dangerous they are. To adults, even adults. We have no business bringing these things around kids. You know, just bringing them around kids is bad enough. But on top of that, they teach the kids, hey, come pet it. See, it's harmless. It won't hurt you. That's exactly what they do. That is why they bring them in there. They want the kids to pet it. They want to numb their senses. Remove their instinct that tells them to stay away from these things. Really? Not my child. Never. Never. Man, I feel sorry for people who allow their kids to be victimized and manipulated like that. Here, you send your child to school and a bunch of teachers bringing dogs in there. Unbelievable. They done brought a therapy dog into a retirement community this is madness you see this edison students celebrate therapy dog and it's the dog's 100th visit 100 visits now go back to that little girl we just saw who pointed at the dog and looked like she reached out her hand to try to pet it. Where you think she learned that from? Your goofball teachers, 
teaching them to do that. I really feel sorry for people who relinquish their kids to be under the custody of these lunatics. Crazy that nobody questions this. A golden retriever, massive dogs. Do you understand? This may as well be a bully breed. It's just as large. And they tell you to not discriminate between breeds. And this thing can kill them. If they remove a child's fear of a golden retriever, then that fear has also been removed for bully breeds. That's the trick. They're literally trying to get your kids killed. They're literally teaching your kids to commit suicide. Where their death will be a slow torture. Unbelievable. This article surfaced not even, was it March 17th? And there's no pushback against this. Parents should be outraged. See, one day when this happens, when a nutter brings a dog into a school, you're going to get a lot of pushback. Not only from students, but from several parents. You're getting pushback now. Me being online talking about you and your nuttery is pushback. But you're going to get a whole lot more as soon as the message makes a few more rounds. So this is uh, very immoral. It's a, very, it's a crime that nobody even talks about. I don't think I even know of another crime that goes on as often as this nuttery and it goes unchecked, unpunished. Instead, they encourage more criminal behavior. Let's bring more dogs into more schools. Right. Let's give dogs away, especially bully breeds. We'll waive the adoption fee. Here you got another read to a therapy dog program. And they target, they always target small children. Very sick stuff, man. I mean, when you go through people, when I've done research on therapy dogs, man, you could uh, just make a whole channel out of it. Just therapy dog nuttery. You make a whole channel. So I want people to understand that these so-called professionals, behaviorists, veterinarians, and uh, trainers, this is not a real profession. And they're not real professionals in the field. They're frauds. They're posing as experts. Now, if you listen to them talk, you could be fooled, right? You might believe them. But when you do your own research, you will find out that they are liars. And they don't accurately explain the risks that they don't accurately explain anything. I mean, anything. Look at this. You, there's a never ending list of schools. Here's three in a row. Three in a row. Where well, they're bringing dogs into schools and teaching the kids to go up to them and pet them. Huh? Now, 
Okay, retirement home. Oh boy. Yeah, I'm not going to be in a retirement home. This looked like a uh, another elementary school. Look at how dang this is dangerous. Doesn't this look sick now? Oh man. Look at this scenario. The same scenario as the uh, dog that attacked that little boy. A man with a dog on a leash. Child gets close to the dog. The dog attacks. Nothing stops. Look at how this man is holding this dog. Look like he's holding it by the ear or something. This was the same or essentially the same position of the child who was attacked. This don't keep nobody safe. So kids will see a person, an adult, with a dog on a leash and think it's safe. That's what they're trying to teach them. So when you see a, a dog and it's with its owner and its owner has it on a leash, you're safe. That's what they're trying to teach these kids. You're safe. It's not going to attack. In fact, now you can walk up to it and pet it because it's with its owner. Look at this nasty nuttery where they bring a dog into a gym and has the dog walking around as they work out. Boy, this is a nutter party. So disgusting and weird. And they're all just getting off on the presence of it. Why would you want a dog in a gym? You obviously not working out too hard. How pathetic and cringe is that? Look at these goofy, nasty nutters. This dog putting its filthy anus on this mat that she's rolling around on. Unreal, unreal. Man, who in the world wants this? What gym is this? It, it better be a private gym. State gym? What I what is that? Four years uh, responsibility. Yeah. I yeah. I just saw this for the first time. I just pulled it up for the first time right here online, right in front of you. There you go. There you go. Oh, ain't that so nasty? Ugh. Oh, so disgusting. That is so disgusting. Who wants a big, nasty, hideous, stinking face of a dog in their face? Oh, man. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't believe they convinced so many people to want to participate in this. That's unreal to me. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Rubbing on this goofy, dumb mutant. And it's ignoring her. Wow, what do you get out of that? Listen, that don't look fun to me. Don't nothing look uh, pleasing about what she's doing. How, how in the world have these nutters convinced so many people to look at this as a pleasant experience? A nasty, saggy skin, stinking face, disease-ridden, unsightly goofy looking mutt up in your face and you rubbing all over its nasty saggy skin it's mutant flesh Ugh. yes yeah, stay away i had some some uh truck driver today he uh he asked for my email address my business email address. And he laid his phone 
you know, he turned his phone to me, said, hey, you can type it in if you want. I said, no, I prefer if you type it in. Nasty, disgusting nutters like that, like this, which you see on the screen. They do stuff like that. Fondle and rub all over these nasty mutts and then touch a phone. Touch everything and hand stuff to you with their nasty hands. Disgusting, man. No, zoophilia, man. This is zoophilia. Nasty, weird, cringe zoophilia. And they're just getting off, huddled around, staring at these dumb looking, nasty mutants. Look at how this mutt right here, look at how the skin is so excess, it's overlapping this little thing tied around it. So excess, its mouth is literally hanging down. That is disgusting. Disgusting. Flipping mutants. He's not real animals. And you know what? Elephants are beautiful creatures. Natural animals have a beauty no matter how they look. Each and every one of them, beautiful creatures. The only creatures that are unsightly are these hideous, dumb-looking mutants. Huh? I can talk all day about how flipping hideous these things are. Look at this. Look at how these people, why do y'all stare in these things' faces like that? Why do you do that pretending as if you're looking at an attractive face? That is so cringe and weird. Oh, I'm getting zoophile vibes. Strong zoophile vibes here. Ugh. Can you believe they, they try to force random groups of people to participate in this? Just bring a dog into a school, a classroom without your permission. Unreal. What? What? You see, this is why I don't uh, feel sorry for any of these nutters when they get attacked by these things. You stupid and dumb enough and brainless enough to sit there with your stupid face directly in a dog's face staring at it in the eyes, which is what the behaviorists tell you to not do. But because you're so excited and turned on by this hideous monster, you're doing it anyways. What, what, what a embarrassing, disgusting generation we're living in right now. This is a very embarrassing era. And this is good. We're able to record ourselves talking about the era that we live in that way if anybody tries to reflect on this era as a uh, progressive era people will know better oh, I'm, I'm so glad i don't participate in this lifestyle that i'm anti-dog i don't want no parts of i don't want to be anyone's company not even your company in your home after you've removed the no no these this is a group of people that you need to stay away from i mean this is so bad a uh, black labrador retriever epcot is of course calm well trained well behaved he's been perfect drugged up drugged up i guarantee it has drugs in its system they all do well behaved professionally trained he has a really outgoing loving personality he loves humans he loves other dogs um he seems to have a lot of stamina for look notice how these things are not responsive to physical affection just they just sitting there looking dumb 
just sitting there looking dumb. And they're rubbing, look at this guy. They look at how they rub on these things. Like, dude, it's not even a gentle stroke. Like, what are you doing? That, 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 you're telling me that is supposed to be pleasant? Ugh, Lord, save me. I'd rather give someone a back massage. I'd rather give a human being a back massage that would look more normal and it would be normal than this and, right and and this is what they want to uh force onto you without your permission Ugh, just totally irresponsive and she hugging it, hugging something that won't hug you back and don't even understand what a hug is. And they all just getting off. This is so nasty. What is this? Throughout the day, we do think he's got the right stuff, as they say, both in his temperament and we want him to enjoy the work. And he seems to. I think he enjoys it a lot more than probably most, most humans enjoy their jobs because you see he's got 50 people petting him right now. I hope they have, first of all, a positive experience. A positive what What is this woman doing right here? Tapping on this dog's head like that. It's like, Nutter, what is your problem? Huh? Is that supposed to feel good? Somebody start poking me in my forehead like that. They're going to regret it. You see how these people are just totally screwed up in the head like nothing they do seems normal <laughs> it's the craziest thing it's like look what we've said about them might be more true than we think than we're aware of that they're out of their mind well, that's no surprise when you look at their behavior, their overall behavior, especially around these things. Scratching a dog, that's supposed to be pleasant? I don't get nothing out of scratching nothing unless it's some area on my body the itch. Oh, come pet the dog. No, kids, stop doing this. You tell your parents or the adults you don't want to rub on that dog and say dogs are dangerous. That's what you do. I hope they have, first of all, a positive experience, a positive encounter with the dogs and with other students because it brings groups of students together. I hope that they realize that these dogs are part of the campus community for everyone. <laughs> what a bunch of, what a bunch of zombies, man. I hope these dogs burn in hell. Excuse my language. These, th this is too much. This is too much. How they exalt the very creatures that are exclusively responsible for the most heinous and immoral attacks in this country. Let's, let's be clear about that. Lethal attacks on infants, toddlers, children, those are the most criminal attacks of all. It doesn't get any worse than that. And dogs are exclusively responsible for launching those attacks and they do it on a regular basis. No. I'm not going to honor or respect anything like that. I don't have to. And you don't have to. Please don't let these people make you feel guilty or try to pressure you into tolerating these things present. This dog is 
licking everybody's hand, looking for food. It's disgusting. And Derek to meet throughout the week on campus for people, and I'm sure Epcot will add an office hour soon himself. He seems to love the work, and we did screen very thoroughly before adopting him that this would be a good fit for him and for us. We want the dogs to be a touchstone for the students that they can have a, a good experience, and it's almost a guarantee when you hang out with the dogs, they'll put a smile on your face. There you go. You hang out with the dog, it'll put a smile on your face. Listen, I don't need help smiling. And I don't want help. I can find something funny all by myself. I don't understand how these people push rubbing on a dog onto the public as some type of privileged experience. When really... It's totally negative. You put yourself at risk. You put a bunch of nasty germs and bacteria all over your hands and body. You stink now. You smell like that nasty mutt. Huh? You need a bath. You're contaminated. You're probably contagious now. You got all that bacteria and germs viruses all over your hands now you touch other people to get on them you show this soulless creature affection and it does not show you any affection in return it's exactly like hugging a human being and that human keeps their arms by their side and does not hug you back but you want to pretend like this is a loving moment. Yeah, I'm not connecting those dots. I cannot, I just can't wrap my head around the seriousness of these people. How serious they are about being obsessed with these things. I cannot wrap my head around that. Like, unconsciously, I try to understand it, but I can't. They are like cult members. And the dogs are the deity of the cult. And they display the exact type of behavior you'd expect from a cult member interacting with the creature that they worship. And quite naturally, if you worship an animal or creature, many of you are gonna have, gonna be very intimate with those creatures as well. And I think that's partially what we're looking at when we see stuff like this. Now I have gone off in uh, a rant, a random rant that I shouldn't have, that was not planned. Okay, yeah, have to get used to that. Oh, man. Oh, wait, whoa, whoa. Now, oh, okay. Does, are you able to see the videos in the uh, members area? Somebody probably responded already. Yeah, because I don't. It's doing something's wrong. Something's wrong. I don't think people lost their membership. I think it'll be reactivated in February, March, April, May, and May, May 5th. It should be reactivated May 5th. If not, we just start all over and people will be able to join the channel. I'm sorry, I don't know why the, these people get under my skin. They shouldn't. I should uh, be adapted to their nuttery. I'm not. And I'm glad I'm not. I probably wouldn't think anything of it if I were to somehow understand them. It's the confusion 
that keeps me going. Huh? Crazy world, man. At my job, I send and receive a lot of emails. Like all day, I send and receive emails. And the other day, this lady uh, sent me an email. It was about some transaction or whatever. I had never talked to her before. And after she left her message, she included a photo of her dog. Just for no reason at all. Just included a photo, a full photo of her dog. We up here talking business. Talking about transactions, shipments, and deliveries. And she's sending people photos of her dog. I can't, man. I cannot with these people. I gotta go. As always, it was a pleasure venting with you all. Oh yeah, huge red flag. Ugh. I yeah, I don't even want to think about it, man. Huge red flag. Uh. But you know what? Some people have noticed. That sometimes I, I have to take a break from dealing with attack videos and, and I'll go into the therapy dogs and whatnot. And I have to do that. I, I started doing that without even thinking about it, just based on how I feel. Like, look, man, too many attack stories. Let me venture off and deal with something else. But uh, here lately, here recently, th these attacks are increasing. And I didn't even think that was possible. But if you go back to uh, some of the videos, some of the earlier videos, there were not as many attacks each week. So th this idea, how long has there been 4.7, 4.5, 4.7 reported bites per year. It's been like that for like a decade. There's no way that's still true. You know what need to happen? We need to have real investigators making contact with hospitals and getting the real number. I can almost guarantee they haven't updated that information in well over a decade. There's no way. The true number is probably well over 5 million. Not the true number. I'm talking just reported, reported dog bites. Probably well over 5 million now. We don't have the proper people, investigators out here doing research into this. So, yeah, we are all we have. Any type of uh, news... Anything you find, you even think I might be interested, please be sure to share it with me. We're going to have a long weekend starting tomorrow. Stay Thursday. Starting tomorrow. And I'm going to start early tomorrow. I'm going to schedule a uh, live stream for 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, 10 a.m tomorrow morning and I hope you all will be able to join me as we continue with this crusade.